Harlequins have always been an army with tons of mobility and a very deep bag of tricks. They can be very difficult to play, but those who master them can, can run literal circles around their opponents. What we found in our playtesting that everything that makes this army strong actually becomes better and more essential to the core game. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all the things we've learned, both good, bad, and different than 8th edition. Stick around. 9th edition brings a number of changes to the core game rules. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by taking a look at the ones that are good changes for Harlequins, things yeah. that they might be able to lean into that they're powerful at. We'll then look at things that have actually affected them negatively. Right. Um, but we will talk about ways of, of trying to negate these things and, uh, and some silver linings within that. When we're wrapping up, we'll look at some lists, talk some strategies, and share with you some of the things that we've actually learned in our own playtest. Yeah, it's not so much that the Harlequins army or any army has changed so much. No. It's the game has changed around it. Now, in this case... The game, I would say, has changed in the favor of the Harlequins. Mm -hmm. They've always been a very difficult army to play, yep. and uh, that's not going to change. No. But for someone who masters it, I think the current missions play particularly well to the Harlequins' strengths. It is perfect for them. One of the difficulties before, especially if you're playing things like ITC, um, you had to constantly be getting kills. Yes. And in fact, you often had to get a kill in the first turn. Even mm -hmm. the main game's workshop missions required for a strike, right? And so now, there are no points in the primary for getting kills. Um, and in fact, there's ways of actually picking up kills later on if you choose to take those, those secondaries. So what this means is Harlequins, despite the, the, their ability to actually dive deep into enemy territory turn right. one, they don't want to. They don't want yeah. to overcommit. They that's what, very tricks that's what would always happen. You know, the Harlequins yeah. are an incredibly uh, fragile army, right? Yep. And what they need to do is wait for their perfect moment to overwhelm their opponent mm -hmm. and really take all their threats out at once. That's right. And that usually meant that they had to wait mid-game or later game. Yep. And now the missions now support that a little better. They can be on a little slower start, get into position turn one, and look for a big turn two or a big turn three. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> and one of the ways that they do all these things that we're talking about is, of course, with command points. Right. Now, this was something that was really tough to get before. You know, yeah. you could maybe build a battalion. Brigades were really difficult. Um, but you would have only so many CP, right? And with the advent of Psychic Awakening, suddenly it's like you want to have double what you have. Well, luckily, you can kind of do that, right? That's exactly right. It's you a really elite more. army. Mm -hmm. The HQs are expensive. The base troops are expensive. That's a lot. And so filling out a double battalion often wasn't the right call. No. And so now that you make a single battalion, but you get way more CP, two times, three times the CP you had before, especially with the new stratagems, this is an army that unlocks a ton of tricks. You can really surprise your opponents with a lot of really cool moves that they can pull off in combos. That's right, and one of the interesting things about the pacing of the command points um, is the fact that, of course, you get 12 up front, then you get one each subsequent turn. It kind of forces people to spread them out, which Harlequins are actually okay with, and you can, of course, take things like the ability to regenerate, which Harlequins do have, yeah. and just keep getting those back and back and back as you're kind of doing a couple tricks each turn, things like that. So this is great. This is a big, big deal for them. Yeah, one of the things we've been talking about is a change in the meta that's coming. Yeah. And this is all vehicles and monsters got stronger. And this is going to uh, really encourage people to take more of those vehicles and monsters on the board, we think. Mm -hmm. Well, the Harlequins are particularly good at taking out those big targets because of Haywire and because of Fusion. Those are two of their marquee weapons. And it often was really wasted when you rolled up on a table and no one had that. Now, of course, the increase in monsters doesn't help. Right. Um, the fusion's still okay against the monsters, but yep. um, the increase in vehicles in particular, the Harlequins are amazing at dealing with that. That's very nice. And one, one uh, side note is the fact that the Haywire Cannons are now, now Blast. So right. that kind of helps them with this dual rule additionally, where it actually does make them better at clearing hordes. They were not terrible before, um, but they have a bit of a role. And uh, But more importantly, that Haywire is almost never going to go to waste. Really think. continues to make the bikes an even more essential unit they're than so they were good. before. Yes. Um, not only are they beautiful, but they're super deadly as well. Um, another change to the game, of course, is that it's smaller. The board mm -hmm. is a lot smaller. And for an army that's fast and about wanting to dominate the entire board, that change in size really made them that much more deadly. Yeah, absolutely. The smaller board definitely hurts armies that want a deep strike to get into position. But the Harlequins, while they can, their main tool is actually just their speed on the board, right? You can use Twilight Pathways to double move things. The bikes already move fast. Yeah. Everyone advances and charges. That's correct. So they're perfectly happy to be behind ruins, completely out of sight, and then just charge out of them uh, like the mad clowns that they actually are. So And, and really, not nice. only are they fast and the boards are smaller, but I find, you know, because of their pervasive fly and flip mm -hmm. belts, the things like screens and terrain don't really affect them. So exactly. people are just trying to screen them out. You're trying to stop them from getting the charge they want. This army really doesn't care about any of that. Exactly. And and that's a good that's a good point to bring up fly. Right. Uh, which most um, Eldar, Eldari players yeah. are very sad about. 
not the Harlequins, right? They do have basically fly, a lot of things do have fly, but what they also have is uh, the rising crescendo, um, basically their, their army wide ability yep. that allows them to all fall back and charge and shoot and like do anything they want. Exactly. So while fly itself got a huge hit as far as that ability, they basically completely ignore it because they of their, didn't suffer their, at all. It's so good. Exactly, and so they you really you can't you still can't trap their vehicles. You can't trap their bikes. Mm -hmm. um, so they're going to keep kind of working at full efficiency through the game. They can afford to run up and charge your tanks, tag them. That's right. And then fall back and shoot themselves. That's right. And this was actually the thing that always kind of kept me from running them as anything other than Harlequins, even including Yunari. I'd have actual Yunari, but then the Harlequins are always the Harlequins because it's too good of an ability yep. to give up. It's very very powerful. Another aspect we want to talk about is how the missions work and how board control is at the heart of these armies, yep, right? That's right. Not only do you need to control objectives, mm -hmm. but you need to control basically table quarters. Right. And in order to do that, you have to be able to really rapidly get into those table quarters. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in many of the secondaries, you have to get to a quarter without being in the, yeah, the center. That's right. And in our experience, that means you need even more speed because mm -hmm. you can't go through that center shortcut. It's really not easy for most armies. We've, we've done that in our tests and we say, okay, I'm in search and destroy. Leave right. no problem. I'll get out of that, uh, in this quarter, but out of the, uh, the bubble in the middle, it's actually really, really and You have to hard. be wholly within, wholly within when they're talking quarters now. Yep. And so this army has the speed to get into those places, and they have units that are surprisingly durable. The That's bikes right. can get anywhere they want. They right. are very durable. Their transports, while an individual transport itself isn't that durable, mm -hmm. once it has a troop inside, the combination yes. becomes fairly durable to remove. Not to mention if you have more than one of them going into an area. <laughs> right. These games don't have that many objectives you need to control. Mm -hmm. At any given point, you typically need to only have three, maybe four objectives under your control, you can handle that with the Harlequins. I think they like that a lot because Harlequins can put out a lot of damage, but they're not very good at distributed damage, right? They want right. to hit one thing super hard, especially with all the new command, uh, the new stratagems. That's right. And you can just punch that thing super hard, which is exactly the way to, to, to kind of play this edition where you can have a targeted hit somewhere. You're not really trying to control everything. You just need kind of more than half yeah. of the board. So that's a big deal. Yeah. In fact, if you're playing this army, more often than not, you might even find that you uh, ignore your opponent yeah. and really just play the mission, use your speed, use the threat that your army has. Mm -hmm. You maybe never execute on that threat, right. but the threat keeps them at bay and then you still kind of play the mission. Be, be a Trixie Eldar player that's and that's right. the way to win. <laughs> um, the last thing we want to go over as a kind of a positive for them mm -hmm. is the fact that the game is shorter. It's now wow. five turns instead of uh, six for competitive. Sometimes it went to seven in casual play. That's right. And this is an ex exceptionally fragile army. It is not, it's barely making it to turn three most games, let's be real, yeah. um, it is definitely not making it to turn six or seven, even in the best of times. Mm -hmm. The fact that it has a shorter game uh, really is a huge advantage for them. It, it really is. And one of the things we mentioned before is they don't have to do something turn one. They don't right. want to do something turn one. Really, they thrive in turns two and three, That's even right. four, where they have sort of taken the board, they've done their big punches, and the other the other people have to sort of react to that, right? Yeah. So that, that's kind of the perfect sweet spot for them. They're one of those armies that benefits the most from that entire mid game. And that's, yeah. that, that's really exciting for the pacing because yeah, it's, um, that's, it gets tough at the end when you only have a couple characters. Yeah. If you play Harlequins, you know there's a lot of shenanigans that needs to happen in late game to maintain your lead. And that yeah. doesn't become as important anymore. Exactly, well, it, it isn't all benefits for them. There are some negatives and drawbacks. Yep. So we're gonna go through a few of those. And I think one of the main ones, and we've seen it's a hit to all combat oriented armies, mm -hmm. is the idea that uh, what we call speculative charging doesn't work anymore. It means you now have to hit every target you charged. Now, that does generally mean that people could screen out better mm -hmm. against your Harlequin, stop them from getting into the meaty target. Then again, uh, because of their flip belts, they can charge over intervening uh, infantry models, right. and they can still have a better chance at making a shorter charge, so your screens are less effective as far as charge distance, mm -hmm. but they're still just as effective at preventing speculative to charges. That's an excellent point. They really get hurt by this more than they benefit from it. Right. They don't really have many screens that, that will be uh, super useful. Uh, there are some things you can do with your more durable units, like the bike screening out for some of your transports getting yeah. charged. So there are some ways you can try to turn this into a positive, um, but largely this is something that's going to kind of change the way that we actually play the army. Yeah. So that's one thing. Another thing to think about is when we're charging, a lot of the time, like we said, this army is A, fragile, yes. and B, Pretty expensive points wise. Yeah. So you want to have these protected charges as often as possible. And with the changes to uh, line of sight and terrain, that's harder. What does that mean? Well, um, previously, if you played an ITC, uh, for example, the bottom floor of ruins would be considered closed. That's right. Um, many people did not play with that, so it was open. Um, but if you were playing ITC, you would get into the corner of the building, you would declare a charge, get as close as you can without being visible, and have a, have a charge without any overwatch. That's right. right. Now, even though they've taken overwatch out of the game, you could still spend a CP. And if you're charging a big heavy unit, mm -hmm. 
that's going to Overwatch eat a lot. You're charging some uh, uh, intercessors, yep. or sorry, uh, intercessors or aggressors. It's still worth it to pay that CP because you're going to drop a few of these in Overwatch, especially with a bunch of rerolls. Right. Now that's a lot harder to hide away from, as you're saying, because you need to get close to make that charge easier. Getting close often means being in the terrain, yep. which means being visible. And it's very, very risky. You know, if yeah. you fail that charge, now you're completely out in the open. Whereas previously, you okay, you failed, but at least you're in the yeah. ruin. They have to come to you, things like that. That's super nice. Um, and one actually sort of side uh, adjustment about all this thing is the fact that Overwatch isn't very common. That's right. Right? And now you have to often pick your um, relics and your psychic and things like that on your sheet. Yeah. This is we were actually, talking about this yesterday, yeah. right? You often would, you would often tech into the ability to ignore Overwatch, mm -hmm. which now you have to pick before, at home, before you come to your game. Yep. You might not pick that as often, no. which means in many cases, you might actually be taking more Overwatch right. than you used to, <laughs> even though Overwatch is out of the game. Because it'll be that key unit that takes it, right? That's correct. Yeah. They'll wait for that perfect moment to Overwatch you, where that perfect moment you used to deny with a key character or right, something like that. Exactly. I think I, I still would strongly consider a Star Mist Raiment, as it st still gives you the three up invuln if you advance, and does the Overwatch. That's right. So I like that one because it has multiple utilities. So anyways, a small note about that, because it's yeah. a kind of a weird thing that sounds like a good thing at first, and then in retrospect, it actually does hurt. Well, this army didn't always have the killing potential to take out an opponent all at once. So what it used to try to do was charge and kill key targets and then pile into and tag right. other vehicles, monsters, etc. Now, as we know, these vehicles and monsters can still shoot in combat, so you can't really tag yeah. things. And normally we're talking about, uh, in other armies, you have screen units, and mm -hmm. they go and tag and they take the shot. Well, now when you're screening with troops or bikes, these are the things people wanted to shoot at <laughs> anyways. Right. And so uh, tagging is kind of a big loss for them. That terrifies me, and I'm really scared about all the guard players out for revenge from what the horrible yeah. things Harlequin players have done to them before. Um, this hurts a lot. Um, one, one, again, couple, two things you can do to counter it. One, we do have one new stratagem where, you, where after someone falls back, you can immediately consolidate uh, up to six inches. Yeah. So if they're not moving more than six, you can kind of retag them. That helps. Doesn't help you getting shot. Uh, and then the other thing, of course, is the if they fall back, you can shoot them. You can shoot them with so those fusion. At least we have a couple ways to try to negate it. The problem is they'll just stay in combat now and shoot you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, but still, you know. Um, if you tag with your vehicles, for instance, yeah. that might still now be a, an interesting trade-off. So you're not yes. tagging with anything quite as valuable. So, but you can still tie up something. And of course, if and you that, don't care, yeah, if that guard player has a bunch of blast weapons, mm -hmm. you know, battle cannons, battle cannons, demolishers, they're they're still going to lose a lot of shots. Exactly. So it's really that's when you tag a guard tank and it has a bunch of heavy bolters <laughs> and a punisher. <laughs> right. Now you're in a bit of trouble. <laughs> So those, those uh, kind of easier uh, tagging targets are going to be harder to actually do anything against. Yeah. And then even when you get the perfect situation of being able to surround a model, which would, you would look for all the time with Harlequins, yeah. uh, so that they couldn't fall back because they were surrounded on all sides, this, of course, is essentially removed from the game right. because of the breakout stratagem. Uh, they just pay some command points. They can move through models as if they had flip belts. Must be nice. Yeah. And then just back out of combat. Yeah, this was big. You would take huge units of bikes or big units of troops. Yeah. And this would be your core tactic. How can I get up there? How can I wrap? Stay, stay alive. Right. You can't do this anymore. Um, it's going to be, uh, you're going to have to be a lot more careful. And this is why many of the times we're saying you might not even want to go no. full floor, full force at your opponent because you don't really have a plan for surviving the first wave. You're risking so much, yeah. it's just not worth it. I mean, you know, again, on the positive, you don't need to as much, right? Exactly. Play the midboard, play the <clears> mission. <throat> so something that Harlequin players, or the army in general, wanted to take advantage of was their powerful mm. and independent mm. characters, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. They had amazing characters. You know, we have a Death Jester here. Uh, famous character to stand at the back of the board on its own. That's right. On an objective. <laughs> That's um, what they do. But it's extremely fragile. This is the most fragile character in the book, mm -hmm. and now you can't have it out on its own and you don't really have enough units for it to it's be a, with it all the time. concern, yeah. Right. And so uh, it really changes the usefulness of these Death mm -hmm. Jesters quite a bit. Yeah, you're going to have to you're gonna have to be a lot more careful with them. I think the Death Jester is hit the most. Uh, Shadow yeah. Seers and Troop Masters aren't as upset because they wanted you want to, to stay with them. them. Yeah. yeah. The Solitaire we were discussing earlier is hit in a weird way just because of the yeah. way that he plays even aggressively, right? He would often come up on one flank of the board hit the army where they were vulnerable, then you'd yeah. be throwing a bunch of things in their face. And so while he was clearly not next to the rest of the army, he was farther away. Yeah. And so tactics like that will be tougher. Um, the solitaire is still great, but um, you're going to have to be much more careful with your character missiles and your back objective guarding characters. Yeah, and the thing to keep in mind is most of the character auras are six inches, yeah. but the character protection range is only three. Yeah, that's a good point. And so yeah. sometimes what we've even found in our games is you're trying to max your bubble mm -hmm. in order to give rerolls to multiple places or buffs to multiple places, 
But in maximizing your bubble, you're actually taking yourself out of protection right. range. Yep. And it's an easy mistake to make, especially early in an addition, where you're like, oh, I'm within six, oh, and everyone's bubble so range. Many times and then someone's up. like, okay, cool, I, I just last cannon that one. <laughs> and you're like, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's it can happen pretty quickly, especially right. you start losing models. Oh, yeah. And you, you start picking them, or you've had your unit in the wrong coherency. Mm -hmm. So you actually have to pick from the side that's closest to the character. That's right. Um, in order not to lose the unit. Oh, and now God. you're going to lose your character. It's a lot more to be careful about. Absolutely. So something that Harlequins would also tend to do is be really, really hard to hit. Yeah, they would that's have right. Multiple minuses to hit that they would that, stack. That's solitaire with minus three to hit. Oh my god, I know. I'm so sad. Rip uh, suit of knives. That's right. It's uh, it's been it's been good. Um, I mean, the, you know, the fact that the bikes and the vehicles are all natively minus one. You can lightning fast yep. another. There's ways to stack all these things, and that's that's all gone now, right? So. Yep. Um, in particular, one of the interesting, well, un unfortunate but interesting things is, again, if you tag a vehicle, I tag a vehicle with my bikes, they're shooting at me, they would be minus two to hit. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter, just minus it's one. It's just minus one. Um, so that, that's a big bummer, and that really hurts the army. Yeah, this army really needed the minuses in order to give it durability. Mm -hmm. That's where some of its durability came from, was right. from those minuses. And this is the army, in my opinion, hit the worst by this. Yes. Right, normal Eldar has durability in other ways. Right. <clears throat> this army actually needed it. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, it's going to change how you play lightning fast, how you play your buffs. Yeah. And this is clearly something that Games Workshop wants us to be doing, right? They yeah. don't want us to stack all the buffs on one thing and make it powerful. Unfortunately, they don't want good. a Death Star. They don't want Death Star. They don't want the big invincible Death Star. Exactly. Nobody, nobody actually wants that. Right. So yeah. you'll save your CP and you'll also use them on troops a lot more because they don't yeah. actually have that innately. One of the big changes is the way that you score those primary objectives. Right. You don't score them at the end of your turn, you score them at the start of your turn, which means you had to survive your entire opponent's turn on those objectives. Now, in today's missions where you normally score at the end, this fast army is one of the best at it, Great. right? Yeah. You zip on there with some bikes, some troops, a transport, that objective's yours. All of a sudden now, you have to be much more thoughtful about what is going to survive the turn. A five-man troop squad out on an objective, that's not going to make it anymore. Right. So you're going to have to rethink how you start scoring objectives. Ironically, the <clears throat> troops in the army are actually probably one of the worst things for playing a lot of these primary missions. That's right. Um, we really have loved the bikes. They're very durable. They yeah. can get up. They can block. And then we also like the transports themselves. Um, again, for the reasons that we said, right. they can kind of block. They can move fast. They can carry bodies inside that right. have more value when they're not the first thing that's shot. Because um, if it's just troops on the point, I'm, I'm sorry, they're going to die. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> um, similar to what we've actually been saying with uh, Craft World Eldar, mm -hmm. when you have a, a, a transport and then yeah. you have a unit inside, that's probably your best bet. Yeah. But to be honest, you probably even need to double up. Because these primary points are the game. If you don't get them, you lose. So if, right. all, if all that stands between you and loss is someone killing a transport and five troops inside, then you're going to lose. That's real scary. <laughs> so you're going to have to put more than that on points. And you can see, if you have two transports full of troops on a point, mm -hmm. They're not elsewhere killing. Right. You can't be playing both the mission no. and be putting all your troops forward. You just don't have enough. So you're going to have to think about the ways you build your army. And as I said, and this is what we said at the beginning, you have to focus more on playing the mission than going all in at your opponent in most games. Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, so the last negative we want to talk about is one of the classic Harlequin tricks. Yeah. Um, which is the fact that um, they often would like to screen with um, usually bikes, but troops troops almost as often. And you would have a character that is just far enough back that they couldn't initially be charged, and then they would heroically intervene into combat. Uh, yes. They have a few things that help this. They have a longer range one, a lot of really cool things. And of course, in Eighth Edition, uh, you could not be you could not be attacked unless you were declared a charge against. Right. So if you heroically intervened and they didn't declare you as a charge target, they can't fight you, but you could fight them. Exactly. It basically made you invincible in that combat. Yep. And it could be the difference between uh, a big swing. Yeah, absolutely. So now in 9th edition, however, um, yes, the speculative charging is gone. So that sounds like it's good until yep. you realize the fact that um, there's an addendum now to who you can attack. If you've charged, you can only attack the units that you've declared against a charge against and against units that have heroically intervened. That's right. Shucks. So, so unfortunately. Those characters are no longer safe from that trick. <laughs> heroically yeah. intervening is still good, but your opponent yeah. is going to attack first, mm -hmm. and now your character is exposed. And yeah. these Harlequin characters, they hit hard, but they can't take a hit. No, no. Right? Absolutely. So they always need to kind of strike first. Yeah. And uh, and so that is kind of that's that's one of the tricks that you've lost. It's a yeah, it's gone. We haven't really used that that trick since the new edition because there's not as much of a benefit. They are decently fragile. Um, yeah. you can still use it against like small things. But uh, yeah. So that is kind of our our most important uh, positives and negatives for the army. So having uh, keeping all that in mind, let's take a look at some strategies in ninth edition. We'd like to walk you through uh, one of the stratagems that actually we think is very difficult for other armies to enact. Yeah, this is one of the secondary objectives. And, you know, we actually mentioned before that this army wants to go hot, score as many points as it can, as fast as it can, before right. it gets destroyed. 
It ultimately is a fragile army, and thankfully you can score all your primary points in only three turns, not mm -hmm. the first turn though. That's right. So that means uh, you can you can get them all by turn four, Perfect. and you can score all your secondary points by turn three or four as well. And so what we have here is we're going to be attempting to perform the Psychic Ritual, mm -hmm. which is one of the more interesting secondary objectives from the game. It's so fascinating and so um, uh, enticing. Yeah. What it is, is you have to have a Psychic within six of the center of the board. Um, they need to cast uh, perform a Psychic Action, yes. which involves casting the Psychic Ritual. It's cast on a three. Exactly. So the, the, the casting is not the trouble. Your opponent could deny it. That's probably sure. the scariest thing. But if you are able to do this ritual three times in the game, you get 15 points which is max, Which is max points. Maximum. But if you don't finish it all three times, you get zero. So it's a big risk reward. Right. It is by far the easiest thing to get 15 points on if you just do it. Yeah. Um, but it's one of the only ones that goes all the way down to zero if you don't complete it entirely. So big risk reward. But in the spirit of this army, you would pick this secondary when you felt that grabbing the center wasn't a huge risk, mm -hmm. and when you felt that your opponent wasn't instantly going to deny you. Exactly. And so the in interesting thing about this one is, as we said, there's actually only like one mission where you have the objective in the middle. It's much more rare in ninth edition. And so often this is kind of no man's land where nobody actually really wants to be. You want to be on the objectives. Right. The objectives might be over here, and you'd have more bikes or transports over there exactly. as well. Yeah, and the rest of the game would be being fought over there. Exactly. So you're, you're saying to your opponent, OK, you can stop me from getting, getting the secondary, but you need to go through one of the most durable units that you'll ever be shooting at, right? That's right. What you can do is you can spend the new um, stratagem from Psychic Awakening, giving these bikes his minus one to wound aura, give them the three plus invuln, of course. That's right. Uh, you could give them the six up feeling with pain, but that would involve a second sh shadow sphere to be nearby. So that kind of depends how your game's going. Um, because remember, when you do a psychic action, you get no other spells that you can actually cast. That's you correct. That. And you can't have done a psychic action if you advanced. That's or right. even if you That's fell back. That's very true. Um, even if you're a Harlequin who loves to advance or falls back. <laughs> um, but one of the nice things is you're, you are fast. You could get within six on the very first turn. Your bikes can easily get here, set up this formation. It's very possible. And you yeah. could get your first ritual off right at the very top of the game. It's really and nice. your opponent doesn't often, as you're saying, they can't afford to necessarily focus here right. when you're also on all the other objectives. This works specifically because your army is so fast mm -hmm. and the things that are up here guarding are so durable they just can't afford to split focus. Yeah, it's a very unique um, tactic. As I said, it looks like a great secondary, but it's actually very hard to complete. And yeah. so Harlequins are one of the armies that is uniquely positioned to actually perform it uh, with this little carnival pedal formation. Yeah. So this is a secondary you might want to try out, but as we said, it is very situational. Yeah. Watch out for someone who's going to be able to instantly deny you, essentially a more powerful psyker. Yeah. Watch out for anyone who wants to come and grab the center from you, mm -hmm. um, because they, you know, if they put enough force, they can clear the bikes. They can uh, take out this psyker. Um, and watch out for missions where you feel you really need all your weight on this other objectives. Um, but I'd say probably one out of every two or three out of, or one out of every half or yeah. third of your games, this is going to be a good choice for you. 100%. So with that having been said, let's go ahead and take a look at a different strategy. One key change to 9th edition is the changes to coherency and when, that, and when and how that is maintained. Something that happens is after the morale phase, you must immediately start plucking models from units until they get back into coherency. That's right. It's kind of a big change. Uh, if you played Age of Sigmar, it works this way. Exactly. And most of the time, um, this is really just on you to do the mm -hmm. right thing and, and, and basically have your units placed in the right coherency. Right. But the Harlequins have one of the best tricks in the game for taking advantage of this new rule. It's so powerful. So the, the Death Jester was already uh, known for its ability to pop off things like guard squads, yep. um, where you would kill one, do D3 mortal wounds, subtract two from their leadership, and then they have this ability called Death is Not Enough. And that would let you uh, that would let you pick the first model that flees. So you and could kill a sergeant kill or sergeant, someone really important. Warder, an exarch. Demon banner, yeah. so good. And it was always a useful trick that kind of was situationally good. But now with the new coherency rules, this becomes pure gold. There's more opportunities to make it work. Now, that doesn't mean you'll necessarily get a great opportunity every game. No. But when it comes up, you'll get a lot more of efficiency out of them than you could previously. So let's show you how to make that work. That's right. So what we have here is 10 intercessors, and they've spread out and taken up a ton of space. This and for what it's worth here, you can see this is a fairly standard deployment. They've yep. created a handful of triangles here. Um, each model is in range of two other models, mm -hmm. and they've got some durability here. If they start taking wounds, you can start pulling from either side. And what you could do here is you're still keeping coherency even when you pull models. So That's you're right. going to see people in this kind of formation because mm -hmm. it takes up a lot of space, but at the same time, it's fairly protected. But this particular safe formation is not safe against, against a Death Jester. That's right. So let's take a look at how we do that. So the basic idea is you take the Death Jester, 
obviously they probably won't be standing right, right out front, but yeah, this kind of could be pretty far back. gives you that idea, yeah. right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the relic. This turns the Shrieker profile, which you have to use for this, right. um, into a strength six. Same as before, minus three rend, three flat damage though. Right. So pretty reliably. It means can you kill can take out some assessor. tough, some tough targets. It's with this. great. Yeah. So in this example, we're going to be looking at running him as Dreaming Shadow. Sure. And what this does is unlocks uh, the um, stratagem for one command point. In the shooting phase only, it's literally, they don't say Death Jester, but they mean Death Jester. Yeah. Um, every hit generates two hits, every six generates three hits. Yeah. So in this example, we're just going to assume we rolled average, which is a single hit, which turns into two. Yeah. With, with uh, decently average dice, we actually kill two intercessors. That's right. So two of them go down, they can pull them from either side. That's the intelligent exactly. thing to do. So they're plucking, they're fine, they're like, cool, this is all good. Um, once we've killed at least a model, then of course we... Um, explode for an additional D3 mortal wounds. Right, so that's on average another intercessor down. That's right. And in fact, what could happen is you could actually proc that multiple times, I believe. Right. But we're just going to average it out, say we kill one more intercessor, Yeah, right? you could have had another one down here as well. Exactly. That would be great as well, but so, otherwise it's So fine. this is already good. We've spent, we had the relic, we've spent one, one CP. We are now to um, the morale phase, right? right? And so, of course, um, this is where this build, um, we're looking at what they have a... Uh, They've lost three. It's an additional minus two yep. to their leadership. From the Shrieker. So they have a leadership of eight down to a leadership of three now. Pretty good. They have to do on a dice. That's right. They do get a reroll, but it's decent It's decent odds. If they if one runs, we now get to pick the first model that runs. So what we do is we pick this anchor point right here. That's right. And what we do is we say, okay, you now have these two groups of three. That are out of coherence. That are out of coherence. And they're probably going to pick this one because it doesn't have the sergeant. And so now you can see out of a 10-man squad, we've killed seven. So good with a single death jester. Now, for what it's worth, you could even have larger squads yeah. that if you cut a linchpin in the center, you could take a, a many more models. Yeah. And you have other squads that go down even easier to this, right? You can imagine uh, Tau drones, oh um, which have really low leadership, and this mm -hmm. is easier to proc on. That's right. Um, long units of grots, of guardsmen, things like that yeah. are always super juicy. Early in the video, we talked about how difficult the faction can be to play, but how well they can perform if you play them well. Yeah. This is one of those moments where you can really capitalize on the mistakes of your opponent yes. and really take them out. I mean, even this, right? There was no real mistake that the other person made, but we still did well with, with honestly, pretty average rolling. Yeah, and never could a, a Death Jester taking out this many Intercessors. Oh, no. This is absolutely vicious, and you wouldn't have even had to use the CP if you were going at a weaker squad. It's That's only right. because they have such good leadership and they have two wounds each. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason you had to use those. Otherwise, if you were going at a weaker squad, you wouldn't have even need the Relic. That's right. right. If you're shooting at a Guardsman squad or something equivalent, <laughs> you could still take that uh, unit down to a third mm -hmm. without, the need to, uh, without the need to spend the CP or take the Relic. Absolutely, 100%. So there's a couple, a couple variations you can use off of this basic strategy. Um, in this case, as we said, we use Dreaming Shadow because of the Exploding Six. Right. Um, you could even up it up further, but this is kind of all we needed. Um, you could also take Silent Shroud, which of course is the faction, is the mask that has debuffs to leadership. Yes. Rerolling multiple dice, picking the highest. That of course becomes useful because the board doesn't actually look like this. It yeah. most likely looks like bikes coming up, pushing that six inch leadership debuff, things like that. So there's a couple variations off of this depending on what mask you like to run with the rest of your army. Yeah. Um, you're never going to leave home well, without this cheap, powerful Death Jester. One of the things to keep in mind yeah. is these models didn't die until the very end of the turn. Mm -hmm. And so just because you pulled that linchpin model, if you ended up charging this unit, they could consolidate back into coherency. That's right, that's so right. if you wanted to gain this efficiency, don't shoot a unit and then charge it, because mm -hmm. this won't work anymore, nope. right? And so uh, if you're doing this, you generally want to pick a unit off on its own yeah. that you're trying to get added efficiency on, <laughs> uh, not one that you're planning to charge, because uh, they'll pile in, and then that and efficiency will be lost, and they'll still fight with all those extra units, and you won't really have gained anything. No, you're going to have to learn that finesse um, and, and restraint, uh, which yeah. isn't always an easy thing to do. I, I, I know that myself. That's right. Um, but yeah, if you can execute this well, um, it's something that just keep an eye in your games that makes the Death Jester the most terrifying death clown that you've ever seen. Absolutely. So why don't we go and take a look at some of the, uh, the army lists that we have cooked up. Cool. So before we look at specific builds, I wanna, we want to talk about a few of the things that we think are essential to every Harlequin list. Sure. So the number one thing you're always going to want to do when you leave home with your Harlequins is take at least four HQs. Yeah, that's now, true. Now that immediately creates one problem before we talk about what those four HQ are. You only get three in a battalion, you get two in a patrol, um, so really... And you uh, can't take a brigade. And you can't take a brigade because, yeah, we'll yeah, talk about well, that. Yeah, well you could, but you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, it's, we don't recommend it. Yeah. Um, so we think it's effective to take a battalion with a patrol or even just two patrols, right. depending on what you're looking to fill so out. So either way, you're going to lose two CP. Yeah. That's, so that's no matter what, to play Harley Quinn's correct, 
You're down two CP. You don't start with 10, uh, 12, you start with 10. That's right. So having said that, the, what are those four HQ? We say at least two Troop Masters, two Shadow Seers. Um, there's a lot of reason for that, but the main one is we noticed that a lot of the missions in our playtesting are on two flanks of the board. And so having uh, the ability to push up on two flanks or hold one, push another yeah. one, is very important. You kind of need, you can't start building one castle. No. You could in 8th edition, you could kind of build this one castle, yep. and the objectives were sometimes all in a line together. Mm -hmm. Um, and you could kind of hold that, right. and you didn't need uh, you didn't need things to hold the back objectives. Right. You could just have single characters and yeah. things like that. But now you really need to spread two full castles completely apart. Yeah. So you really need to think about two bubble ranges. Yeah, and those the bubbles of the rerolls for the uh, troop masters and the minus one to wound from the shadow seers are right. just too good to leave. So absolutely, that's why we need four HQs. Um, so we're going to have that in pretty much every list. We're always going to have a solitaire, of course. Um, we want to make a couple notes about. Um, your, um, your, your, your mask detachments, right? Your chapter tactics. Um, and so, personally, we really like Frozen Stars. Plus one attack on the turn that you charged. Uh, it's been popular with the Rise of Space Marines. Yeah. And I don't really see that changing. I think it hits I think super still hard. Great. Yeah, and, and you have much more CP to use all of those uh, throttling kind of damage stratagems, yeah. right? Yeah, so you can turn damage. these killer units into ultra killer so units. so good. And that's what you want. You want people to be afraid of what you could do, you want them to be so afraid of how fast you are and how well you hit yep. that they play badly. Exactly. Like that they they they're scared and they actually walk back right. and they're 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 timid about some of their things. Um, that's what you need to do. You need to kind of intimidate your opponent a bit. A lot of um, the more aggressive games or uh, units in this game now are just as much about uh, projection of force as they are the actual force. Yeah, that you they don't have, need you don't actually right? need to charge. Nah. you just need people to know that you could. Yeah, I'd be like, watch out, come on, bikes. Right. They're gonna be. <laughs> Four attacks on the charge, two right. damage, plus one to wound. So that's really, really exciting. Um, one of the other really popular um, mask attachments was the Soaring Spite. Of course. And of course, this is advanced and shoot without penalty, and pistols become assault. Uh, very powerful. Yeah. Pretty much everything is assault. Everyone wants to move up the board. But there's a couple things that have, that have changed. One is the boards have gotten smaller. Yes. Um, and so I'm not going to say it's not useful, but it's much, much less needed, right? That's right. You don't need to be... Uh, it's much easier to jump up the board. And two... You often don't want to, right? You don't need you to don't, be you don't need to overextend their deployment zone. That's right. Yeah. So for that reason, we don't like it as much in this edition, with the exception probably of fusion pistols. Of course. Um, fusion pistols are still very short range, um, and with the new changes to line of sight, this becomes very interesting to actually have your uh, troops with fusion inside of an or behind an L, not That's inside, right. so you're invisible, and they actually are able to run out and reach and hit uh, these tanks that we kind of think are going to be so popular yeah. in the game. And, and if somebody really does have those tanks just out of reach, yeah. a Harlequin's army can't survive all game with those tanks just going full force on you. Yeah. So you do have to have a plan to go up and hit them really hard. Right. And so this could still be a good strategy for that. Exactly. So that's a couple notes on the new masks in 9th edition. So having said that, we love our number one kind of all-star unit for this army yeah. in 9th edition is the bikes. They've always been great. They've always been amazing, but they do so many things now. They play every part of the mission. Mm -hmm. They're durable. They fight. They can hold. They can uh, do secondaries. Um, and they're even pointed fairly. Yeah, they are. Uh, lots of strats that work well with them. They're, they're the absolute MVP. They're the backbone of the entire army. 100%. So really, ideally, we like to run 12 to 18 in the list. Um, pretty yeah. much all of my Harlequin lists, I'm running 18 as many as I can because they're so good and they're so cool. That's right. And they, they're, they're very Harlequin. You know, they're super fast. They yep. hit hard. Um, they're all the things you'd want out of a Harlequin unit, so definitely you want to double down on them. They really do everything. That's right. So in a, in a bike heavy list, which I prefer, I would still run all the support characters. Right. I would also take um, about three transports. You're playing with, you know, I don't know, 20, 20 troops or so maybe. I'd sure. like to have one, or maybe like 25. Yeah, I'd like to have one big 10 man and yeah. then a couple others that are just in the transports, right? So you can still play that part of the game. So that's three five man squads maybe inside each one of these transports yeah. and then one big 10 to take all your buffs be the one on the field. Um, so much you could do with that 10-man squad. That's right, that's right. Um, and so, uh, loadout-wise, Fusion's great. I still really like Caress with the new plus one damage, because yep. they hit that strength five, only one damage, or low damage, but then with the plus one, that's really nice. So that's one kind of build, yeah. which is actually largely what we have here. And right? even if you think of uh, the troops that you put inside your transports, mm -hmm. it's uh, you can think about making these as cheap as possible. Yeah, honestly. Because the goal here is to just plop them onto an objective, right. wait for the transport to be blown up, Continue to stand there with your troops and wait for the troops to be blown up. <laughs> That's totally you true. You don't want to leave the objective and go and fight something. Yeah. Um, and often you're going to be taking the charge if you're defending, and a five-man troop squad is going to blow up no matter what. Exactly. No matter what charge is it, basically. Right. <laughs> so don't don't overinvest on the ones in the transport. Overinvest on the the ten-man squad. And you can run them very cheap, right? It's just it's it's very few points for ultimately what's still a good involved decent speed. Yeah. Exactly. But keep them in your transports as long as you can. 
So the second build that we're thinking about is still with lots of bikes. Yeah, um, we still probably, take as many bikes as you can. You still take as many as you can fit in, but you're going to want to max out on, well, not max out, you're going to want to take many of these transports. Many right? more transports, Many yeah. more transports. So we're talking about like six or even more potentially. Fitting them with, with squads inside, you're really trying to play the secondaries in this mission, right? Yeah. You're trying to say, okay, I'm going to hold these points. I'm going to try to get my uh, table, table quarters missions. All these things that I might die, but I'm going to be fulfilling all of these secondaries. Yeah, they're basically uh, sacrificial units. You hope yeah. almost to get two uses out of them. Right. Like, yeah. get one secondary and one primary point, and then it's mm -hmm. dead. One secondary, one primary point, Absolutely. it's dead. Absolutely. And basically, if you have, <laughs> you know, uh, if you're picking up what it, what amounts to almost 10 points per unit, right. um, then, you know, if you throw them all away, after those six, you've basically got most of your score for the game. <laughs> and and that's the way you should kind of yeah. think of them. They're, they're not there to go and kill your opponent. They're there to pick up a secondary and a primary point. Right, and remember that in the new missions, you can get tabled and still win the game. That's right, it's and that, that will happen to this army. 100%, that's, yeah. and that's why I want to mention it, because it, it, it does happen. You don't have to you be know? worried that you're getting shot and that you're dying and that maybe you're not even killing that aggressively. Mm -hmm. um, you do need to be worried that you're not getting the points. Yeah. And if you try to go hard for your opponent, and that gives them perfect efficiency to wipe your army, right. and then now you can't score or kill them, now you've lost the game. 100%. But if you go way up on points uh, early on, you can afford to have things not go so well. Like maybe you're not killing as well as you wanted to. But as long as you're up on points, you win the game. That's great. So that's a couple of different builds we've been playing with, and especially uh, specific loadout, loadouts that we found to be very, very useful. Um, and that's kind of our, our impressions of Harlequins in Ninth Edition. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. We have been loving playtesting these. Of yeah, course, we're, we're going to have a game coming up really very soon. soon. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm so excited. I love Harlequins. It's going to be awesome. Um, so definitely let us know in the comments uh, what you guys have been trying with your own Harlequins, uh, what you think would be interesting. Um, and definitely don't forget to miss out or don't miss out on any of our <laughs> other faction focus videos. Of course, of course. Um, by now you've probably seen that we've released quite a few. We still have a few more coming out. And for every faction we're doing more battle reports and uh, so we've got a ton more coming there we've got videos on um, how to play 40k that are coming up as well so definitely keep an eye out for all of that yeah make sure you guys like and subscribe so you'd never miss any updates i will see you guys very soon on the tabletop see you then